All right, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. May the Most High bless you on this beautiful Thursday as we give him all the honor, the glory, and all the praise. I want to talk to the young men for a moment. My title now says, What's supposed to be in us is not in us. What's supposed to be in us is not in us. Now, I'm not talking about everybody, but the majority of the young men nowadays are lost. Walking around, you know, pants sagging, want to sell dope, want to be popular, want to make a name for yourselves, want to hang with the wrong crowd, want to get high, want to get drunk. I'm not condemning you in this video, but I'm just concerned, and this is a wake-up call. Oh, how I wish we had a lot of people to reach out nowadays, but the world is reaching out. And young men, the thing is, oftentimes I have a saying, it's best to fit out than to fit in. Because a lot of us, even not growing up, I thought it was about fitting in. Until I started taking a good look around, I started watching everybody die. I'm talking about what I've seen with my own eyes. How the streets took pretty much all of my homeboys. Even right now, I don't have a lot left. It's only a few. Only a few. And there's a way that seemed right to a man, to a woman. But I'm going to deal with the men in this video. But it leads to destruction. Now, I know a lot of y'all are angry because of what happened growing up. Whether the father was there or he walked out or if he in prison. In a black race, that's what's going on. Now... When I, when I deal with a lot of young men, um, I notice one thing. They want, they want that popularity. They want, they want the money. They want the power. They want the fortune. They want the fame. And if you really think about it, that's the same thing Satan tried to offer Jesus. That's what he did. You think about it. That's why the world have their way of doing things. And so many people are falling for the world. But if you look around right now, everybody look like they want to be popular. They, they got to have the money, the fortune, the fame. And you look at the videos and things of the rappers. But nobody shows you really the things behind closed doors. And when you look at the young people, young men, most of the people that you want to be like, think about it. They living, on a, they living a messed up lifestyle. I'm not going to say everybody. But the majority of them, they never happy. They always in trouble. Look at um, Justin Bieber. Every time I cut the news on, a young man is in the news doing something. He got all that money. There it is again. What does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Got all that money, but always in the news. Look like every other day. And the thing is, they never happy. They just look like they happy. But when you have a shaky foundation growing up, you grow up hurt and you start making up a lot of excuses in life. So to my young men, y'all know who y'all are here, is dealing with the dope game. I've learned from dealing with a lot of youngsters. I'm from the streets also. They don't just sell dope just for the money. I mean, just to be honest, the average young man on the corner ain't doing nothing but nickel and diamond. They're not running no big time, though. They get a better kick out of, I'm hard now. I'm, I'm kind of looked up to because I don't fret nobody. I'm on the streets. I'm selling dope. So they're not just in it for the money because half of them not really making a lot of money. Truth. I know the truth hurt. You might have some that's selling big time, pushing bricks, pushing some real weight. But the average young cat just nickel and diamond on the street and get high they sells. I'm talking out of love, y'all. And they think that selling dope is the way to go. They may make a little money and then try to go score and then smoke half of their profit up. They never come up. That's why they be on the same corner, same clothes, haven't went nowhere, different year, same spot. And I found out by talking to a lot of them once again that I didn't have no father growing up, bro. I got to get out here and do what I got to do. This is all I know. There it is, K-Ray.
and they some of them will tell you it ain't it ain't even really about the money. I want I want to make a name for myself. They want to feel like somebody. So they they find themselves finding whoever it is in the streets they look up to. They really don't care who it is, and they show them the ropes. That becomes like their father figure. Back to the title of this video. What's supposed to be in us is not there. Because what's supposed to be installed in you from your father is not in you. And when you grow up without that, you're very unbalanced. So you look in each and every way to try to figure out what move to make next. That's why I'm talking about fathers in this video. And young men in this video. It don't matter who you are, what color you are. The things that fathers are supposed to do is not being done a lot of times nowadays. Y'all, this thing I can say so much about, and it's heavy on my heart, because our men, the young men now, the majority, have never known who their father was. And now they have grown up trying to be a man, and they never learned how to be a man. Y'all see what I'm saying? Or they might have learned how to be a wicked man by looking at his wicked behavior. But some of us had a father growing up, some of us didn't. Some of us father was there and he wasn't there. Y'all catch what I'm saying? In the house but still wasn't there. Because you can be there but not there. And that hurt, that pain, that, that love that you crave that's not there, that you need to make it in this life with. It makes your child angry when you're not there. Now, what am I talking about? I'm glad y'all asked. Ephesians 6 and 4. This is something me and Brother K. Ray been having a Bible study on for I don't know how long now. Because it says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. But what does it say after that? It says, But bring them up in the nurture in nomination and ammunition, excuse me, of the Lord. Admonition of the Lord. That means brings them up in the Lord, train them, teach them, show them the way. Don't make them angry. Discipline them, but you gotta do it with the word. Teach them about the Father. Nowadays, it's a lot of young men they don't have no discipline at all. Because that starts in the home. And that when there is no father in the home, that's why mama right now trying to figure out how to control that that out of control son or daughter. I don't think a lot of me and us, we really don't understand what the most high instilled in us. And what and the and the account that we got to give for not doing this. Yes, mother can teach the child. But I'm talking about the Most High's divine order, how he placed a man to be that worker, to make those decisions. K. Ray said something the other day that I'm not going to forget. While we always talking about submit, husbands submit, I mean wives submit to your husband. He said why husbands don't submit to God. Mm. We well, always want to get on the woman for submitting, but we don't even want to submit to the Most High. Thank you, K-Ray. Another confirmation. But this anger that fathers are causing on the children, and you wonder why that young man is always locked up. He keeps saying, this is all I know. Because he, no, he didn't have no foundation to stand on. He didn't have no foundation to stand on. It starts at home. And then the sad thing is, when that father is not in that home, mama got to pay for them consequences. That child angry. Paul talked about anger so much. He did. Paul let it out in the scripture. The role of a father. The way the Most High showed us. That's why every day is Father's Day. I know they got a day coming up that's called Father's Day, but every day, it's Father's Day. You got some fathers doing things on purpose to make their child angry. 
I'm being real, y'all. Making them angry on purpose. In so many homes, y'all, so many homes, children have been provoked. And they provoked to wrath because of the father not being there. We're going against the scripture. And once again, when that father's not there, mama got to deal with the consequences. And that's hard. So I remember growing up, I got we got plenty of whoopings. Man, the pastor would whoop you. The Sunday school teacher would whoop you. Whoever in the church would whoop you. At school, they would whoop you. Mama would whoop you. Anybody could whoop you back then. I had thought about something earlier. Because it go past just whooping a child. So a lot of children can get whooped right now and they turn around and do the same thing. A whooping don't even scare a child no more. Just to be real. You got to put something on that child mind instead of that child behind. Am I saying no whoop? Nah, whoop the hell out of them. But let them know why you whoop them. And whoop them in the name of the Father also. Show them why you whoop them. Give them love. Listen at them. Let them pull their heart out. But some, some people just want to abuse and slap and beat their children to death. Why am I saying this? Because growing up, they would whoop the hell out of us. But my question is, how many, how many of them whooped us, but they didn't spend no time instructing and training us? You see what I'm saying? Never got taught. Never really known about the most time. And the problem was, most, well, most of us grew up in a religious family, just to be honest. A lot of us grew up in holiness. Just like I said in the other video, they always talked about holiness as in your outer appearance, but they never showed you really how to be holy, how to really live a set-apart life. Same thing can happen with a whooping. You can whoop a child for years, but the way they got me growing up, it was past the whooping. So you ain't even have to whoop me that many times. It was right here. When you got to my mind, you got my actions already. It was some things that mama might have said. Grandma might have said. So many might have said. And when you think about it. When you see your children, I mean, not your children, but when you was little, when you watch your parents as you grow up, you watch their mistakes, you learn from them. And you grow up trying not to make those same mistakes, some of us. Pastor Cochran said something in his video the other day. How you are a splitting image of your parents. You go down that same path. It's just a generation after generation of the same thing because we're never taught. And children got to be taught at an early age, young age, about the most time. But we too busy letting Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and all the cell phone and everything get the best of our children. That's why they know more about what's going on in the world and the Kardashians and and you know the reality shows and everything versus what they don't know in the Bible y'all not only is this verse speaking of responsibility and accountability but I noticed something else it was talking about possibility because the Bible already Yahshua already told us things that are impossible with man are possible with the Father we are man we flesh but if the Father is the head of our life, can't nothing stop us. Nothing can stop us. So that's that's possibility. It's possible. You don't you don't have to be like your father if he lived that dope life, that, that gangster life and died on the street. Quit saying this is all I know. Quit saying that. Because the thing about it, once again, the most high is going to hold us accountable for what we are not doing. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video right there, y'all. I hope I said something that can hit some of us.
because I was hit with it. As I'm doing a video, I'm hit with it. This speaking to me on down. It hit me first. You know, I hope I hope a lot of people are listening at this because this is from the Most High. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Peace out.